Hi, this is Debbie. I um, just thought I'd make a quick video. I haven't made one in a while. And I wanted to make a quick one and just show you some things that I have in progress. And um, also, I have a couple things I want to talk about. I um, made one yesterday. And for some reason, it... Um, I don't know, the, the voice wouldn't sync up with the, uh, meow. there's my kitty, uh, the voice wouldn't sync up with the video, so I decided to redo it, and besides that, and here's Bailey, um, besides that, you know, I just wasn't that crazy about the way it came out, so here I go, making another one, love my hairdo, I just got back from the uh, gym, where I did my duty and did my exercises and got in the pool and mostly the best part was the hot tub or the jacuzzi. So I enjoyed doing that. Um, let's see, what's been going on with me? Well, first of all, we've got great weather here. Oh, I don't know, today it's like in the low 50s, but it's sunny. Um, and strangely, my granddaughter See how I look without these. Oh, not that good. Anyway, my granddaughter, um, I still like the glare in them, you know. She moved to Boston about two, Bailey, stop. About uh, two and a half weeks ago, just in time for the um, oh um, record setting snow. She's actually not in Boston. She's just. Um, I think it's about an hour and a half out of Boston to the west. She's going to a community college there called Wachaset Mountain, Mount Wachaset College. Anyway, she's trying to establish her um, residence there in Massachusetts so that she doesn't, when she goes to the university, I believe, University of Boston or Boston University, anyway, that she... Um, one had to pay out of state tuition, which is, you know, tuition in these days in college is ridiculous enough, but uh, that way at least she won't have to pay out of state. She'll have, be able to be considered a resident. So anyway, um, she has had the luxury of going from there to here and within three weeks getting, I don't know, 40 inches of snow, 50, however many you guys have gotten. She's been out of school for our inclement weather three or four days now since the semester started. And um, so she's getting a really good taste of it. And I hope she loves it, but I hope she gets tired of it and comes home. So that's what's been going on there. And then, oh, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, um, my sister and I went to Galveston which is beach here in Gulf of Mexico, if you don't know, um, just outside of Houston. My dad had moved down there, and he's 83, and he needed some help getting some stuff put up and unpacked. So we rented a two-bedroom condo on the, I think it was the sixth floor of the San Luis Hotel Spa Resort thing. And, uh, wow, that was great. We had a full kitchen. It was just like an apartment. It was like it was basically a two-bedroom apartment. It had three balconies that looked directly out onto the ocean. So we visited Daddy a couple times. Otherwise, we kind of spent time eating and looking at the ocean and knitting on the balcony and playing video games at night on the uh, iPad and iPhone. It was nice. I loved it. I think that actually in the summer, I want to do it again. The biggest problem is that that particular condo is mucho dinero. And um, unless you've got some people to share it with, no, I'm not having an earthquake. My cat is, if you see it shaking, uh, my cat is uh, cleaning himself. He's decided it's time to get on the dining table, which by the way, you're not even supposed to be on the dining table. Bob would flip if he saw you up there and clean himself and have an itch or scratch or whatever you want to call it. So anyway, we went there and, oh man, I, I wasn't ready to come home. Um, but you know, if you share the expense, it's not too bad and um, it does make for a nice visit. 
So we went down there, and while we were there, I made it a point to go to the uh, one of the local yarn shops. It wasn't actually in Galveston. It was um, up around NASA in the area of Baybrook Mall, if anybody has any idea where that is. It's between Galveston and Houston. And found the cutest little local yarn shop. I wish it was here. I wish it was here. It had a great room in the back, you know, ladies knitting, having their tea or coffee and just you know talking and uh, it just really looked like it was a really inviting place the people were so nice and I learned how to use a uh, yarn swift because I bought a hank of yarn and I don't have a swift so I had to I had to wind it while I was there and apparently they just show you how to do it and then they let you go for it here um, heaven forbid you you touch their yarn ships <laughs> shift swift but anyway i've got a short video of that i think it's a couple of minutes and um hi bailey you want to say hi say hi hi bailey say hi to the people say meow meow no meow no you're not talking now you got some pretty green eyes in there yeah you do okay can you get down now yes okay anyway um I have a short video. It's, I don't know, two two minutes long, something like that, that my sister played videographer and we took while we were there. So I'm going to stick that in right here and I'll be back in a minute. Hi. I'm in Galveston. This is Park Avenue Yarn. And they're making me do my own. But that's okay because it's fun. So could you do this? This is pretty yarn. This is baby alpaca from day hand dye. So it does like it. What does this do? And I'm almost done. Cool. I have to get one of these. I like it. Okay. So that's all for now. So hi, this is the yarn that I was winding. It is Plymouth Select Plymouth Yarn. We're at Park Avenue Yarn in Lake City, Texas. Very nice, very nice. Very soft, baby alpaca. Oh wait, no, no, that's, that's soft, but it's a um, super wash hand dyed worsted. This is baby alpaca. And Plymouth yarn, uh, hand dyed, doesn't have a color. 141. See, pretty. So I learned how to use a Swift. So now I have to get one. And I have to buy yarn that's expensive enough to need one. So now I'm going to go do more shopping. But I want to say hi. And that's all for now. What'd you think? It was cute, wasn't it? I really, really do wish it was here. They were just so friendly, and um, if any of you ever get to Texas, uh, you should check that out. It's, it was a really nice place. So, with that, I um, I don't have much to show. Well, I have a little bit to show. Not a whole lot. I bought a gadget, and if you follow me on Instagram, that's Daisy Moonbeam, for those of you that don't. Um... I have a new gadget, and you'll know I love gadgets. And I think I showed this on Instagram. In fact, I know I did. I know I keep looking out to the side, but I can see it's very nice out, and my dog's out there, so I kind of have to watch for him, too. Anyway, here it is. It is a... I don't have my glasses on. Just a minute. You'd think I could see that. It's called Crochet Light. And the thing I like about it is that um, my living room, which is over there, is um, really dark in the evening. It, it, it's basically our theater room too, so uh, we keep it really dark. And um, I'm always needing some kind of light that is, you know, um, focused on what I'm doing. So this is it, and it's cool because it lights up. See? Can you see? Now you don't see it. Now you do see it. Anyway, I, think, I haven't tried it yet, but I think it's, it's going to be kind of neat. And I think I'm going to start some granny squares, and so I'll uh, 
use it for that. Anyway, if I like it, I'll buy some in some other sizes. So that's one of my gadgets. Well, actually, that's my newest gadget for today. Okay, uh, so far on the uh, subject of stash enhancement, I don't know if you know it or not, but um, if you've followed me at all, you know I have a jillion, million, gillion um, skeins of yarn. So I don't. I have gotten to where I'm only buying specific things for spe specific things, and I am trying desperately to learn how to make socks. I think I've got it, and I'll show you that in a minute. But anyway, so I started buying some sock yarn because I had really avoided buying sock yarn until I decided to make socks. <laughs> so anyway, um, I got I got this, and I, yeah, the color is pretty true. It's called Mellow Stripes. I don't know if anybody's ever used it, but it's got this aloe that's supposed to make it slide better. So, you know, I may even use uh, the uh, bamboo. I have some Eddie Clicks that are bamboo. I may use them for this because why not? I mean, I've already got something on the other one, as you'll see in a minute. Uh, but, um, of course, I used a coupon. These are from Hobby Lobby. And then I came home and... <laughs> I decided that I had to have more. So, what baby? Anyway, I'm sorry. Um, I ordered three different colors in this yesterday from, of all places, officesupply.com. It was the cheapest place to get it. And um, so I've got six more. It takes two to make a pair of socks. So this is going to be one pair. And... Then I guess that'll be three more pairs. And so here, since I mentioned socks, I want to show you my work in progress on my sock. This is as far as I've ever gotten. Yay me. I'm pretty excited about this. Wait a minute. Because I've just not had luck with socks. But this one is coming along nicely. And I, I love the way it's patterning. I'm doing it with... Fortissimo Soca. Maybe it's Soca. Mexico color. And um, it is made in Mexico. Huh. How about that? 75% wool, 25% polyamide. It is, uh, I don't know. It doesn't, I don't see a color on it. Well, it's 9094. Okay. So if you like it, that's what it is. I think it says shoulder stall. So it's making a it's making a really nice pattern. And so now that I've decided that I can in fact make socks, this is obviously toe up. Then I bought more sock yarn. Because you know, I must have more sock yarn if I can actually do socks. So anyway, put this back. Wait a minute. Oh. Okay. So there's one of my works in progress. And, oh, somebody mentioned on one of the Instagram things when I posted my sock progress. I had it on this. And what happens is it gives me an excellent way to see where in the heck I'm at. And if this sock is actually going to fit. What this is is that you don't even have to try it on because that's your foot. But what this is, is a template that um, when you buy the um, Fish Lips Kiss heel pattern, which is only a dollar, I mean, it's, it's, it's really well worth it, then she gives you the information on how to make this template. And really, what you're doing is measuring. It looks like a lot of calculating and all, but really, it's just measurements. And this line shows you where you start your heel, which is good because I would have had a problem knowing that. And also it helps me with knowing, you know, how far along I am on the actual sock, you know, when you put it on there, how far I am from the heel, which <laughs> I'm quite a ways. But anyway, that's what this is. And, um, wait a minute. No, that's, that's my hair. It's not kitty hair. Anyway, um. I like it. It 
is a really good guide and for a buck that is a, that's a wonderful pattern for a buck so if you have hesitated and you got an extra dollar you don't know what to do with do this okay now one of the last things that I've got is my temperature scarf blanket whatever I have just about decided that I'm going to start over I've actually only done two weeks and although I think it is really pretty it's just not really I, I don't know I, something I'm not working on it I think it may be that it's on this humongous oh yep, yeah that wasn't good for my table on this humongous 28 inch loom which is a pain in the butt to use sorry but it is um, you know I try to sit on the couch with it and oh my goodness it's just really hard but if you will notice I do I do like that it's coming out so I'm torn I don't know what to do I really think it would be more practical if I would um, go ahead and stop at this point and possibly do maybe a granny square um, scarf not scarf but you know granny squares one per week it would give me 52 squares and if I made them big enough which I'm look, I'm thinking you know seven rows for one for each day and then a border uh, if I made them big enough it's bugging me again then um, I would have a pretty decent little throw or a lap blanket or something like that when I got done so I'm still trying to make up my mind on that because I could crochet that and I wouldn't have to have the big um, loom in my lap. However, I think this is just really pretty. So I am real, really still torn about what to do. And even if I do decide to do um, granny squares, I think I'm going to keep this on the loom and just cut, you know, cut the strings here along the, that I can reattach. And then go ahead and make it into like a hooded scarf uh, hooded shawl thing um, of course if I had done it for this all year long this is two weeks so you can see it's gonna be humongous um, and I think what I'm gonna do is uh, go ahead and change it to that and finish this up sometime between now and next winter because you know we've only got about another month and a half of winter here and make it a hooded scarf and still use the same yarn because I think it's like I said I think it's coming out really pretty but I just think the other is more practical anyway so I guess that is let me see about all I've got um, yeah that's it one other thing oh two other things I'm sorry it's not all I've got I have a um, yarn wonder that is is manual and it's only been used I don't know eight or ten times um, and then I got an electric one so I really don't have a use for it anymore it's um, it's not a bad it's a, it's a pretty nice little winder and it did a great job but of course I like I say I've got the electric one and also uh, I there's a kind of there's kind of a different one that I want to get so what I'm thinking is um, I'd like to have you know as many subscribers as possible so I'm thinking about possibly doing a giveaway of a slightly used yarn winder and uh, my thought is that basically what I'll do is give it a month and um, all you have to do to be entered I'm just going to do a random thing one of those random software things if I do this all you have to do to be entered is just go ahead and subscribe to my video blog here and um, then down in the comments let me know that you have subscribed or that you are a subscriber and um, then in a month which I guess would be March 1st let's say March 1st I will uh, do that and I'll pick somebody you know to send it to like I said it's um, maybe a little surprise with it too who knows um, it's in really good shape it's, it's practically brand new 
And um, so if you're interested in subscribing, that's great. Go ahead. I'd love for you to subscribe. It just makes me do videos more often if I see people are actually watching them. And um, if you'd be interested in having the um, yarn winder, I'm sorry, got a little itch, um, then go ahead and let's start at this point. And if you are a subscriber, let me know. If you have, are a new subscriber, please subscribe and let me know. And on March 1st, I'll pick someone to uh, send it to if you're interested. Unfortunately, I have not checked what the shipping would be to get this thing to, um, you know, the UK or Canada. Possibly I could get it to Canada without too much trouble, but getting something to the UK is, is pretty expensive for me. So, I'm going to delve into that. And at this point, I'm going to say it would be the United States and Canada. And, um... Go ahead, you know, and check in or subscribe if you're in the UK or, <coughs> excuse me, uh, somewhere like that. And um, within a few days or the next video, which should be in a week or so, I will let you know if I'm going to be able to do that shipping-wise because, you know, I don't want to, honestly, I don't want to pay more to ship than I paid, you know. For the uh, winder. So if you're interested in that, let me know. And one last thing, I want to say that if you have no religious or political reasons for not going to see the movie American Sniper, I highly recommend it. I was a little, I don't know, I was a little unsure because you know I'm not most, I'm really not into action movies. <coughs> But, but, it was great. It was an outstanding movie. I think one of the best I've seen, <clears throat> excuse me, and I don't have any water here. One of the best I've seen in, oh gosh, many years. And it was the strangest thing because um, we went to a huge theater and we sat in the seats of, you know, where you get food and all, but, um, even in, you know, the whole theater, when the movie was over, everybody that I could see, everybody in the, didn't even get up out of their seat. They watched the whole credits. And then, when the screen, when the screen went blank, everybody said, okay, I guess we need to go. And got up, and that theater was absolutely silent. You could absolutely hear a pin drop. I'm telling you, nobody was talking. Nobody, nobody was saying a word. It was, it was almost surreal. It was just like, wow, you know. But it was, like I said, an excellent movie. I would be happy to see it again, which is really odd for me because I don't normally watch movies twice. But um, again, if you don't have any religious or political reasons not to, it's really not all that bloody. It's a little bloody. I mean, it's a sniper after all, but it's not gratuitously gross, if, if, if you know what I mean. I mean, they don't show you blood and guts. They show you blood, but not guts. But anyway, so go see it. It's great. And I'm going to go now because <clears throat> apparently I need a drink of water and I'll see you later.